singing. I love it. I want to three. Eric. The electric bee. Hi kids, on this adventure with Eric the EB, we explore the Dana Adobe in Napomo, California on the beautiful Central Coast. That's me, Jerry, and Eric in front of the historic Dana Adobe. This video is our longest yet and it's packed with excitement, history, music, stories, and more. Like when we take Eric on a tour of the Rancho's trails and almost gets stuck. Is it all like that, that soft sand? It is. Quite yeah, I don't think it's going to handle it. We were at the Dana on Heritage Day, which was held September 11th, 2021, and included a 9-11 ceremony. Bienvenidos. Amigos, welcome, welcome to our home. On Heritage Day, we also held a reenactment where we get to meet Captain, Captain and Mrs. Dana. Welcome to our home. I was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1797, and I was orphaned at the age of nine. But with the help of my uncle, I got in the seafaring trade, and I rose to be a captain and the commander of my own ship. We got to watch some colorful dancers. We even got to meet some real mountain men. Well, they're pretty smart. There's, there's, there's some truth to that story because uh, we are uh, fur trappers. We're, uh, we're actually belong to, uh, we're members of a nationwide group, about 700, 600 members, a couple uh, uh, out of the United States, but we're the uh, uh, American mountain men. Because this is such a long video, it's broken into chapters, so you can jump to a section you want to see by scrolling over the progress bar, and I'll show you the names of each chapter. You can also find the chapter index in the description box below. That's where we add a lot of important links and support information. But that's enough of an introduction. Let's hit the trail. We hope you enjoy this episode and someday get to visit the Dana Adobe and Cultural Center. Lexi Carreño and I'm the executive director at Dana Adobe and Cultural Center and today we are going to take an exterior tour of the Dana Adobe and Cultural Center grounds which is about 30 acres on the west side of the creek. All right, so welcome to the Dana Adobe grounds. Um, this is the lasting of the original Rancho Napomo that was purchased in 1839 by Captain William Dana himself and was a stopping point and an important point between La Prisma, 
La Prisma Mission and San Luis Obispo Mission. And so this was the grounds of one of the first residences in the county. The house itself is 13 bedrooms and started in 1839 and coincidentally took 13 years to build. And um, when Dan Adobe Nopomamigos took on its mission to save the crumbling adobe, they actually took 13 years to reestablish the building and restore it as well. On these grounds, we now own 130 acres of the original land grant of the 38,000 acres um, sped right wide across from the Santa Maria Riverbed up to the Tematati Ridge behind me down to Los Barros and then all the way to the Dunes End and um, Ocean Front. And so today we're going to take you on an exterior tour around the seasonal trail on our grounds and talk about some of the monumental things that you can see while hiking on a self-guided, guided tour, or even in the past we've had hay rides. Okay, hey. well let's go take a ride around see what else we can find. Sounds good. Alright, let's go for a ride. So getting way on our tour here, we are going to take the seasonal trail. It's part of a three-part system and just... So the seasonal trail wraps around one of our most historic trails that it hits the points of lots of monuments on our property. So starting over here, we can talk about the oak trees. Yeah. The points of lots of monuments on our property. So starting over here, we can talk about the oak trees. Yeah. This is I don't think he likes it. Is it all like that, that soft sand? It is quite Yeah, good. I don't think it's going to handle it. I think what we're going to have to do... Eric can't do it. Oh, he no. got stuck in the sand. No. Oh well. You embarrassed me. You're okay. Don't it's worry. It's not about embarrassing. It. It's just the way it is. Yeah. We'll pretend like he did it. Yeah. We'll yeah, do an we'll, audio. We're gonna go around. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm it's still recording, so. I know I can. Do it. Okay. All righty. So we're here at the Dana Adobe and we are here on Eric and we're going to do a little cruise around and learn about the history of the Danas and the Dana family. I'm going to go up this way. Yeah, I can get you. This is possible. Alright, so what you're seeing here is um, some of the plantings we have done for our state grant from EEMP. They allowed us to plant over 1,300 plants and restore areas in our creek so that we have plants native to California so that our property could be full of new wildlife and help the environment with the drought. Originally, um, when Captain Dana died in the 1850s, 
he was buried under one of the oaks on the property. And so we don't originally know which oak it was, but later on his body was then moved to San Luis Obispo Mission as they were nervous that any animals would come and <laughs> dig up his body. On our property, we host different events, field trips, days for the public, such as Heritage Days, where we have reenactors um, and guided walks and classes about the Rancho area as well. This driveway that we're going down right now, um, these are black locust trees. So these are brought from the East Coast and could be used as firewood because the wood can burn while wet. We're approaching some of the outbuildings here on our right. And so Captain Dana was a man of many trades. He had lots of different aspects where he would sell to um, those coming on the El Camino Real, the Royal Road. So he was a man of many trades with tallow and hides and leather and blacksmithing. He was also a big man of hospitality. So if you had any um, need to stop along your route, you are more than welcome to use one of the horses they had. They had lots and lots of horses. And so you would leave your horse, you would pick up a new horse, get a good grab, a bite of food, and be able to go along your way. So coming up here is a plant on our right called coyote squash. Um, actually planted by the tree mash. It grows back every single year. Really interesting. It has medicinal purposes um, and could be used for things what would we would call arthritis now today. We're looking at the Temachati Ridge here. And so this ridge line, you can imagine back in the day, um, probably has seen many different timelines. So originally filled with lots of cattle and horses. Can you get that down this way? Mm -hmm. Yes. So down here, we can see if we can see it. But we've done research to find that the Montanza, the grounds where they would um, produce the tallow and hides, would be down on this ground. And we think that it would be down towards the creek down here because the wind wouldn't then not blow up to the house. Right here on our left is a Captain Sycamore tree. A very old, old tree that the captain received as a gift. Let's see. Approaching up here, we are starting a vineyard. We have um, a relationship to plant vines from the original San Gabriel Mission, so the original Mission vines. We've already established some Mission olives, so we hope to include classes to learn about the native plants of the area. Included during this time were different fruit trees, like figs. Let's see. Do you do weddings and other <laughs> ceremonies here? Yeah, we do lots of events, private events, corporate events. Um, we love to celebrate. Um, with you guys and make your day special. It's a really unique, rustic place to have an event here. So down here... Is this, this trail is any better? Or no, the that's the same trail I was going to take you on, unfortunately. Yeah, so coming up here is our pollinator garden, which we put in place with the EEMP grant. Um, it's all native plants so that pollinators such as bees and butterflies and different beetles um, would be able to come and go along their way to pollinate the rest of the plants on the property and others. And down you can see lots of different vegetation in our creek down there. That was a restoration project. Um, in the early 2000s, that creek could be filled all the way up to that line where that basin ends right there. 
this is back at the cultural center that was built with the nature education grants um, was applied for in 2016 and awarded and started construction and then in 2018 late 2018 was completed now used for field trips and different events has a commercial kitchen um, and is hosting our exhibit rancho nokomo moving with the times <laughs> Oh well, we didn't go really off-road, but we got a little dirt on the windshield anyway. <laughs> Lexi, thank you. Great job. Yeah, no problem. Hopefully it wasn't too wobbly with the camera no, so no, you no. can hear. junior high school my dad took me out of school to play for his best friend who died of cancer and uh, scared to death you know and uh, they put me behind it was in the cemetery they put me behind this big tombstone so they couldn't see me and I did it and ever since then I'm like man what an honor you know and I have played I mean not not bragging but I've played I don't know how many hundreds of times both for uh, dedications funerals ser different ceremonies and uh, I had the privilege, um, I'm a retired uh, Illinois State Trooper, so my, myself and two other trumpets, we called ourselves the Illinois State Trumpeteers, and the director loved us, and we got to play at every graduation ceremony, every promotional ceremony, we even played out of state around the Midwest in the country, we went all over, people, we would, we would be up on the balcony, and we'd play the Star Spangled Banner, it was like, an, it was beautiful, and people would go, Turn around, look up, and go. Wow! I mean, they they thought it was a recording. It, uh -huh. it was the real deal. Nice. Yeah, it was. Uh, good. It was well, I'm looking forward to it. Handicap parking. Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Dan Adobe Heritage Day. This is 2021 Heritage Day. Um, thank you so much for being here this morning for opening ceremonies. I would now like to introduce. VFW 10978 for the presentation of colors. Thank you.
Good morning, everybody. I'm Rudy Stoll. I'm the board president of Dana. Welcome to the, to the Adobe. We're so excited to have Heritage Day again. It's been a while since we've had it. And obviously, I got to lead with something fairly solemn. Um, we all know where we were 20 years ago today, unless you weren't born yet. It's kind of weird to think that people that were born that day are not teenagers anymore, but we definitely all remember where we are that day. So I'd like to do just a moment of silence uh, to remember everybody that we lost on 9-11-2001. But because we are Americans and the Pomoans, I want to wrap that up with a big cheer for all these brave men and women that have protected us for the last 40 years. Next up, I would like to introduce our donut, our donuts. <laughs> Sorry about that, no donuts this morning. Um, I would like to introduce our docents and I want to give a big thanks to them. They're making this day possible for all of you today. Um, they will be singing our traditional morning song that Maria Josefa would sing to the rancho every morning. Good morning. We're told that in the California days, it was the oldest person in the house, or the madre, the mother, would rise and she would open a window and she'd sing this beautiful song, a tribute to the sun, to the virgin. And as she sang the song, the household would wake up and join in and singing this song until everyone was up and singing. So you can imagine as the sun was rising over the Tematati Ridge, Maria Josefa has opened a window and she begins to sing. Ya ven el alba, rayando el día, digamos todos, ave Maria, para consuelo de pecadores y luz de cielo, ya ven el alba rayando el día, digamos todos. Maria, para consuelo de pecadores y luz de cielo. Now that we're all up, let's begin. <laughs> Thank you. And now I want to re-bring up Miss Maria Josefa and Captain William Dana to start the day.
Bienvenidos, amigos. Welcome, welcome to our home. This is my beloved husband, Captain William Goodwin Danny. Welcome to our home. I was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1797. And I was orphaned at the age of nine. But with the help of my uncle, I got in the seafaring trade, and I rose to be a captain and the commander of my own ship. I went to many exotic lands, China, Australia, India, the Sandwich Islands, which are now Hawaii. But I also went to California. I went with an otter, a seal otter uh, license, and fell in love with the Santa Barbara coast. <clears throat> so much so that I set up residence in Santa Barbara, and that, where I met my lovely, lovely wife. Of course, I was only 13 at the time, and my father, Carlos Carillo, had five daughters. How could he find suitable husbands for all of us? He wisely invited all sea captains to a home-cooked meal to our home, and by the way, here are my lovely daughters. So this is where I first met Senor Dana when I was 13, and he charmed me by his stories of fighting those violent seas throughout the world. My eyes would sparkle. He stole my heart, but it took three years until we were married. Cupid sent its arrow deep into my heart. This young lady, a long, long time before the governor would recognize our marriage, but it did. So here, in our, here on our rancho, we have raised cattle, a lot of cattle, for tallow and hides. And during the gold rush era, ah, we made a lot of money. But when the cattle market failed, we grew raising uh, sheep, some dry farming, uh, very profitable though during the gold rush years. We also raised <coughs> children. <laughs> I had 21 children. Unfortunately, not all survived. Uh, as you well know, no medical aid. This was a, the other side of the moon. So we did the best we could. We had Chumash workers that provided some uh, additional herbal remedies, but only 13 survived to be adults. Our beloved daughter, Adelina Eliza, she was the second girl to be born, and she was it truly the apple of the captain's eyes. But she only lived until she was five years old, and then she succumbed to some horrible sickness that swept the area. Now, she is now buried in the mission, San Luis Obispo Mission. And the wall, you can go into the door, and about three pews up, you can see a beautiful marble, a plaque that talks about a beautiful blossom that was plucked too soon. But on the other hand, we have many boys, many boys, 11 boys, and a lot of help for the captain and the rancho. And we were known far and wide for our hopon, our soap, and our candles that the captain gleaned from our many cattle that we had on the lands. This is true. This is true. What a happy life I've had here. A very happy life because of this one. Gracias, senor. We also had many workshops that the captain had, as you can see, as you are on the grounds today. We had a blacksmith shop. We were known for our uh, spurs and our bridles, very good quality workmanship. We had um, two weaving shops for different cloths. We even had the captain <clears throat> brandy making <laughs> on the grounds. Um, and we had a very fine life here. The captain made sure that I was well provided for and even brought an organ from Paris, France and wine from Paris, France. So we had a very lovely life here. We did. Uh, may I add one more? One of my favorite visits we've had. We've had many visitors over the years, but Fremont and his army camp camped here. Indeed. And you even invited him to lunch here. He did. He dined with us. So. Yes, and uh, should we tell them a little bit more about Senor Fremont? Please, I would. It's not too risky. 
Oh, not to risk it. No, that would be Jim Backworth, who was a male writer. Yeah. All right, Senor Fremont uh, came from Monterey, and he was going to conquer Central Coast because we were not welcoming Los Americanos. Um, we were a little suspicious. In any case, by the time he arrived here, his horses were tired and pleaded he needed new horses. The captain generously gave him 40 beeves, he killed 40 cows to feed his men, and fine bread that our cooks provided. And uh, Fremont was enchanted. He wanted to know what was happening, what was planned for him. The captain very wisely was advised um, not to reveal what was planned at Gaviota Pass. We all knew that the rancheros were up on the cliffs ready to push over large boulders as Fremont marched through to Santa Barbara. But the captain was very wise. He said nothing. He gave him lunch and told him, take what horses you need, but don't take the family horses. Don't take my horse. They were all beautifully trained where I can even as an old woman could ride. But guess what Fremont did? To his, it might have been his lieutenants, mm. but did we not get them back with oh, creativity? We did. He took them all, but later that night, our vaqueros took our bell mares by. And the bell mares siphoned off our horses, and so they came back home. So we had a, a good life, senor. We did. we did. And we always welcome guests as we welcome you. This is a place of hospitality, so welcome. Enjoy yourself here, and thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you all. That concludes our opening ceremonies. Our first performance today. Sorry. Um, our first performance today will be on the front veranda with traditional folklorica dancers. So if you'd like to make your way there or to other stations, be our guest. Have a great day, everyone.
party begin. Welcome to Heritage Day. Welcome to Dana. So this house is seen. Let's see. Who do, was this house here for the Revolutionary War? Who knows? No, no, a little, little too early for that. But this house was here during the Civil War. Now, it wasn't a Civil War battleground, but 1865, this house was started in 1837. So that's amazing to think how far back this goes. So this house and this property has seen a lot of things over the year. And we're happy to share it all with you. Welcome to Heritage Days. I'd like to turn it back over to Lexi, our executive director. Hi everyone, I hope you have a fun-filled day. We have lots of booths to check out today, lots of performances back on the veranda, which is actually the front of the house. I would like to introduce this morning to kick it off, the teachers of Napomo. They will be singing the traditional Napomo song, so I'll invite you forward. We're happy to be here today to share with you what's officially the Napomo song, the proclamation that declares that it's on display in the visitor center. So we really do have an official song uh, for Napomo. It was written by the fifth graders at Napomo, Ele uh, sorry, at Dana Elementary in 1986 with the help of a man named Tom Hunter who put their lyrics to a tune. The tune is not written down anywhere. You won't find it. You have to hear it. Um, we were all teachers together at Napomo Elementary and sang this song on a regular basis with our students. At one point, 750 students in the cafeteria all sang this song together. They knew it very well. And uh, we are not performers. <laughs> we are teachers and our audience was very forgiving <laughs> being that they were, you know, five to eight year olds. So um, I, that's our little disclaimer. Um, but we are happy to sing it for you and it does mention the Dana Adobe. It's not the first thing so you got to pay attention. Here's the Napomo song. Notice nobody wants the mic. <laughs> Along the central coast of California, not far from the ocean, there's a town. It's small and growing, it's a nice place to live. The summer turns the foothills brown. The wind blows, it doesn't snow. There's a eucalyptus and an old crow. Cross road, high and low, the clouds are like a pillow in the pole.
um, for bringing that to us today. We now have the song displayed in our lobby, and so now you can always come and see the song, and we'll hope to post it on our website so that everyone can learn the song of Nipomo. Well, they're pretty smart. There's, there's, there's some truth to that story because uh, we are uh, fur trappers. We're, uh, we're actually belong to, uh, uh, we're members of a nationwide group, about 700, 600 members, a couple uh, uh, out of the United States, but we're the uh, American Mountain Men. Uh, we're an invitation only uh, group and uh, we're molded uh, by. Uh, survival skills. We had uh, our founder, Walt Hayward, uh, him and a lot of his friends, uh, Vietnam vets, come back from Vietnam, uh, got a hold of uh, their uh, father's or their grandfather's black powder and then wanted to start a survival organization. And then they found out that after a little while, batteries die, kerosene runs out. They weren't true survivalists, so they used to do it through their research and everything. Kind of led them to the uh, Rocky Mountain Fur Trade Company and then uh, emulating the uh, skills and the mannerisms of the uh, fur traders, uh, basically from the 1820 to about 1830, 1840, basically, is kind of the, uh, the, the so it was more Western American based stuff. The eighteen, not not the Russians and the uh, no, not the Russians. And, and and it, it's originally it came from the British came over, yeah. and the French. Yeah. And the Russians were here the early Russians. too. Yeah. The Russians were uh, Fort Ross, uh -huh. and, and they were yeah. they were more they were more into otter. Ah. They they wanted the seals and the sea otter skins. The very the very first mountain man group together was in Canada. And then it came That's down here. Um, Ashley, uh, General Ashley, put together a, a, one of the hundred men to go out and. To, so it's really upholding the tradition using the the materials and and tools and well, techniques. That's all they had then. Yeah, but I mean, you, so the the mountain man is carrying on that tradition. We're we're we're, we're carrying Using on that tradition as much it's authentic. Our, our group, basically, our group started out as a survivalist organization, and then it kind of oh, morphed into uh -huh. what we are doing now. And our charter, with you know, our 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 goal is to be as authentic as possible uh, in our mannerisms and, and in our accoutrement and in our gear. Uh -huh. All of our gear is representative of that time period. Uh -huh. uh, there may be some antiques in some camps, uh, but mostly not, but everything that we have has been researched to an item or something similar to that time period, as far as our equipage or accoutrements, you know, the the saddles, uh, the uh, the uh, tentage, uh, the, or the shelter, the firearms, and all the accoutrements that go with that, along with the uh, the ability to uh, to take game and to make meat, and but to also use every portion of that animal, like the Indians. Uh, uh -huh. Well, yeah, exactly. But by by taking the hides and preparing the hides for market and then so what we have here is uh we don't I'm, have I'm any videotaping is that right oh yeah that's fine hopefully you added a little bit of that because <laughs> i might drop f-bombs occasionally Basically, what we're trying to do is emulate the lifestyle of the food. yeah yeah i get it it's kind of recreate like the civil war guys are recreative no, mm -hmm. theirs is different they actually do they, they do recreate really specific events like a battle yeah yeah we don't. We like. You're just doing the lifestyle. Yeah, they call and, us experimental. And you guys actually go out and do the woods. We do experimental archaeology. Mm -hmm. We'll research and 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 we'll read and we'll go through manifest and rosters of of different expeditions. You know, whether yeah, yeah, it be yeah. Uh, sublet and uh -huh. and and and. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, brain fart. She got me on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, sublet and and and. The Civil War and the Cowboys. They Kit Carson and, and, and Jim all, Bridger, you know. Uh, so, anybody doing Lewis and Clark? I wonder. Oh Lewis yeah. And Clark? Oh yeah. All over the place up there. They do. In Montana. Yeah. yeah but it was. Big. We just, you know, that's that's pretty what this is a rendition of, uh, of of a small trappers camp. We'd have a camp keeper, a hunter, and a trapper. You know, camp. You know, and, and it can rotate as you know the jobs can rotate from day to day. 
rut. Yeah, nice. But uh, basically, you need you need a cam keeper. He, you know, he's watching the horses and the mules. Yeah. Why you know why the hunter and the trapper go out? They want to go in pairs. It's not as dangerous because you know you have to realize that they're they're trapping in indigenous people's lands, tribal lands that yep. they're not welcome to. Yep. You know, uh, it's capitalism in its finest. Yeah. Thanks for watching this episode of Eric the EB as we visit the Dana Adobe on Heritage Day. Keep on buzzing!